Hey everybody, it's me, top half Ian, bottom half giant robot, and welcome to a very special video. You might remember me mentioning that I was going to be moving soon. This video was filmed during that very move. There will be sights, sounds, food reviews, hotel rooms, cat. This video will have all those things and at least one other thing. So sit back, relax, and uh, I hope you enjoy going on this road trip with me. If you've been following my channel for a while, you might have noticed that I have a bit of a habit of moving. It kind of feels like it breaks my show up into seasons in a way. In the last season, I left Washington State, my home for the last five years, and returned to Texas, the state where I grew up. This season, I'm leaving Texas and returning to Washington State, and yes, that is as ridiculous, tiresome, and expensive as it sounds. When I decided I wanted to film on the road, uh, my initial idea was a road trip snack review video, but plans kind of changed along the way. Focusing on the move became the priority, and filming for the video just kind of happened whenever, so we were kind of left with a bit of a mismatch of content. Mismash? Why doesn't that sound right? Mishmash? Smish smash? The drive started in the early afternoon after the movers loaded up all of our belongings. We're headed from Fort Worth, Texas to Amarillo, Texas, a drive of about five and a half hours. It's a really weird feeling moving away from my childhood home a second time, even weirder to watch this footage back after the move is finished. The whole move was bittersweet to say the least. Before we get very far, I decide that it's coffee time, so I pull over into a Starbucks. Uh, well, I at least try to. <laughs> I accidentally pulled into a QT gas station, and instead of just going to the nearby Starbucks, I decided I was already in this parking lot, so I had to commit. I got one of those refrigerated Starbucks mocha drinks that are, like, not very good. <laughs> but I regularly buy them when I'm in a gas station. I can't really explain it. Since we're not even leaving Texas today, the sights are all going to be very Texan. Wide open skies and flat, flat, flatness. It's very flat out here. I used to not appreciate the visual aesthetics of a flat landscape, but after leaving it for a while and then coming back, it definitely has its moments. Something you see a lot when making this drive are wind farms. There are tons of these giant wind turbines out here, and I think they look really cool. Oh, and there's me driving safe, eyes focused on the road, unflappable. Since this was the shortest drive of the trip and we didn't even leave the state, there really isn't much more that I saw worth talking about, aside from maybe some small towns. Here's some footage of Quana, Texas, population 2,641. There's me again, this time driving the car like a normal human. <laughs> I was very excited. Sad to leave Texas, but excited to arrive in Washington. Mm -hmm. The sun hasn't even set yet as we arrive at our destination, Amarillo, Texas. Tonight we're staying at a Hampton Inn and Suites by Hilton. That's Hilton like Paris Hilton, by the way. You know the one from the hit movie, The Hottie and the Naughty. I've seen that, it's uh, bad. <laughs> the hotel was right next door to a restaurant that was heavily advertised on the drive up, the Big Texan Steak Ranch. There were signs all over the place showcasing their signature free 72 ounce steak. Free that is if you eat it under an hour, otherwise it's 72 dollars. 
20 minutes of gunfight, and we've got a head-to-head -head up here, folks. You guys, root them on, root them on, root them on. Here's the big Texan himself looming in the distance, just daring you to taste his 72 ounce meat slab. Uh, so I'm taking some time to look into it, and it turns out that this contest has some pretty interesting rules. For instance, you're not actually allowed to choose where you sit if you go for the 72 ounce steak. That's a little strange. Once you've started eating, you're not allowed to stand up, which is a little weird. I guess it's to prevent you from standing up and maybe shaking the food further down into- no, it doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't make any sense. If you lose, you're allowed to take the leftovers home with you, but you're not allowed to eat or share them in the restaurant. Should you become ill, the contest is over. You lose! Please use the provided puke container. And of course, my favorite rule of them all, you don't have to eat the fat, but we will judge this. Well, anyway, is this hotel a hottie or a naughty? We're gonna find out. The lobby was super nice, even though I did kind of rush through it here. I was gonna film the whole walk to my room, but someone hopped on the elevator with me, so I put my phone down. We chatted about this and that, you know, the usual stuff. In fact, I, I, I read where some guy was in some sort of taco. Uh, Recently, yeah, someone choked and died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Here's the hotel room. It's definitely got a cool green vibe going on. Green bed, green couch. Uh, and here's MJ, she's here too. I was really worried about moving across the country with her, but she did really well on the trip. I'm proud of her. Back to the hotel room though, it's really nice. A bit small, but a lot nicer than I was expecting. The bathroom was pretty good too. If I had to complain, uh, well, there was nowhere in the shower to set down shampoo and soap, which was annoying. And the bathroom had no fan, which is just unacceptable for me. Every bathroom should have a fan so I can have some white noise to dampen the sound of my private business. Even I don't want to hear that. Also, the inside of the bathroom door says, it's a good day for a good day. And you know, I'm just grumpy enough of a person to complain about that. Don't tell me about my days, door. You don't know about my days. You'll be happy to know that for dinner, we ordered in from Big Texan Steak Ranch. I just couldn't resist the meat hunk. I got a steak, and while it wasn't 72 ounces, it did come with some mushrooms. I got some mashed taters, a side salad with ranch dressing, a dinner roll with extra dinner rolls, and a jalapeno with a reminder of our current location. Oh yeah, it also came with this great genuine metal, definitely not plastic silverware. This looks like some sturdy stuff. Honestly, it needs to be sturdy, because I had to saw into the steak just to get a piece. Part of the problem is the plastic silverware, but the other part of the problem is that the meat is a little tough, even though it looks like it was cooked pretty well. Mm-hmm. I love steak either way, but for a steakhouse so heavily advertised, I gotta say it was a little bland. The mashed potatoes were really good though, as were the dinner rolls. I don't even know why I bothered ordering a salad. I knew it would be the devil's lettuce. Uh, that's what I call iceberg lettuce because of how evil and bad it is. Overall, this dinner was less about the quality of food and more about the experience of eating at the restaurant advertised to us by a billboard man that we became friends with along the journey. The meal was topped off with some 90 day fiance and some Hagen dazs coffee ice cream from the lobby, an excellent combination. A nice end to day one. It was a bittersweet day, but definitely heavier on the sweet. It 
it's day two and we're trying to get from Amarillo, Texas to Cheyenne, Wyoming, about an eight hour drive. Day two of a road trip is an exciting one because everything is still fresh and fun. Driving doesn't seem like a huge hassle yet and the excitement of discovering what we'll see today out on the open road propels me forward like a guy driving a car, <laughs> pretty much just like that. first city we hit on the drive is Dumas, Texas, population 15,691. It's really cool when the road we're driving on just happens to take us through a town. It's like a mini sightseeing adventure. It's also a fun time to try and imagine what your life would be like if you lived here. Like, what would it be like to grab a drink at Jay's Liquor? Or what kind of crazy characters do you think you might run into at Jack's Express Laundry? Or what do you think their version of pizza is like at their small town local pizzeria, Pizza Hut? And believe me, I know what you're thinking when you hear the name Dumas, Texas. Is this THE Dumas from the hit song, yeah, I'm a Ding, ding Dong, dong daddy, daddy from Dumas? And you ought to see me do my stuff. Yes, a Ding Dong a Daddy from the Dumas. And you ought to see me do my stuff. Well, they claim so. We might be on sacred ground here. Before we leave Ding Dong Daddy Dumas, I'm stopping in at Love's to grab a snack. And this seems like the perfect time for a quick road trip snack moment. So one of the things I knew I wanted to do on this trip was try a new snack. I figured that would make for a fun video moment. After searching the aisles for something fun and unique, I finally settled on this cinnamon toast crunch treat. It's like a granola bar, only it's not a granola bar. It, we got cereal, confectionery coating, corn syrup, fructose, high fructose corn syrup, sugar, all of the staples uh, for a healthy breakfast. <laughs> well, in fact, I'm not even sure it's a breakfast bar. It just says treats on the bottom which makes me feel like this is supposed to be more of a dessert. Uh, it's very rectangular, you've got a nice flavor stripe on the top, and it really just smells purely of cinnamon. It's pretty good. Very cinnamony, very sweet, um, but not bad. Even though it seems like there are crushed up pieces of Cinnamon Toast Crunch on here, it doesn't make me think of the taste of Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I mean, it tastes like cinnamon, but it doesn't really taste like the cereal, if that makes sense. I actually only ate one of these while on the road, but they're pretty good. They're better than I would expect. It is very sweet. It feels a little too sweet for a breakfast food. In fact, I'm probably gonna save this second half for a little later in the day. Uh, I feel like I need to drink some water first, but still uh, pretty good, not too bad. Uh, give them a try if you like cinnamon, I guess. Okay, coming up is one of my favorite things that we saw, maybe on the entire drive. Look at how high up this truck is lifted. It's nuts. Nuts, I say. <laughs> okay, the first thing you think is, why would someone want to do this to their vehicle? But that's not important. I wanna know how they get in and out. Has it ever tipped over in any heavy winds? Are you able to climb over other cars with those kind of wheels? So many questions. We're still very much in the middle of Flatland, USA, a strange Twilight Zone predicament in which you can see for miles and miles in any direction, and yet there's really nothing to see. Then out of nowhere, suddenly we're in a small town again. You can literally drive through some of these towns in mere seconds. It's just fascinating to me. Anyway, back to the abyss, where my only real concerns were passing slow cars and slow trucks. 
I wouldn't say that I'm an angry driver, but I'll admit to being an easily frustrated one. I think I spent the majority of my time on the road complaining about my fellow travelers, eh, creative driving techniques. few parts of the journey where we actually saw some rain, which was incredibly lucky because my feline sidekick MJ was very unhappy with the sound of rain hitting the car. It was really the only time she seemed distressed during the trip, but we had this calming, relaxing cat spray that the vet recommended, and it really did help calm her down. Luckily, the rain was short-lived. We've arrived at our hotel for the evening, the Days Inn in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and I'm looking pretty good, pretty good, definitely not tired at all. MJ is still back there, just snoozing the day away. This Days Inn was actually our backup hotel. We originally wanted to stay at Little America since there are just insane amounts of billboards for it, but they were out of pet-friendly rooms. I don't think I've ever stayed at a Days Inn before, so I was curious as to what the quality of the room would be like. Here's MJ taking a look around, and now we will too. First off, the room is huge. It's divided into a living room and bedroom area, and honestly, this large living room went pretty unused. I don't really like how public the bathroom sink is, but this definitely feels like a room intended for families, so it could be good if you wanted to keep an eye on your kiddos all night. The bathroom is pretty basic. Shower, towels, poop hole, the usual. And finally, a spacious bedroom with a fun-sized TV and a scenic, dirt parking lot view. Once again, MJ really took to this room. She spent a lot of time sitting on the windowsill watching people arrive to and then depart from the nearby Outback Steakhouse. It's time for an exclusive Mr. Ian travel tip. Hey, that's me. I'm really dumb. Just because a hotel says they are pet friendly does not mean that the hotel rooms are pet proof. So here's a tip for traveling cat owners. Be sure to check the space behind your hotel bed for a cat sized tunnel. In every room we stayed at during this trip, there was a gap behind the bed, and even though we were proactively trying to keep her out, MJ still managed to tunnel into the crevasse at the Days Inn. She eventually got out, of course, but it would have been a real pain if she was hiding from me while I was trying to pack her up and get ready to go. So before you let your cat out of their bag, take some hand towels from the bathroom and stuff them under the gap behind the bed. It's a quick, easy fix. Overall, my stay at the Days Inn was very pleasant. For what appeared to be a more budget-friendly hotel, everything felt clean and cozy. Day three, and right off the bat, we have a change in our travel plans. We've learned that the movers are way ahead of us, so we actually need to drive through Boise to make up some ground. We're gonna drive out to a small town called Baker City instead. This part of the trip is exciting because it's when we really get to see the landscape start to change a bit more drastically, which is good because I was starting to get tired at around day three, so I needed the excitement. 
You spend so much time driving on flat, flat, flat roads that it feels like you're not really going anywhere after a while. I mean, at least give me a tree to look at or something. We started hitting these gradual hills that would take you up for a long time, then slowly take you back down. Going uphill felt exhausting, honestly, but the view when you reached the top was often pretty amazing. Then before you know it, there's scenery, like actual scenery. It's time for another quick road trip snack moment. Hey, I'm back. And this time I got Slim Jim. Do I even need to tell you what a Slim Jim is? I mean, we all know, right? It's a meat stick, uh, likely thrown together with uh, rejected meat from other meat products. They're like the hot dogs of the snack world. Mr. Jim calls it a smoked snack stick. Okay. These are the mini Slim Jims. They come in a little box. They're great travel sized, uh, easy to grab, maybe a little bit small. I mean, the regular Slim Jims are like this long. So it doesn't really feel complete eating one of these, but it's still delicious. Mmm, it's spicy, it's meaty, it's a Slim Jim. Every time I eat a Slim Jim, it's hard for me to not think about the old, crazy Slim Jim commercials. I'm a meaty, spicy butterfly! <laughs> I gotta get out of here! <laughs> I'll never do a Slim Jim! Eat me! Man, those commercials made me hungry. It also really makes me think of Dave Mira's freestyle BMX. It was like a Tony Hawk's game, but on bikes, and you could unlock the Slim Jim man to bike around as. I rented a lot from Blockbuster, actually. Now, so this was delicious, maybe too small. I mean, I don't think I ever ate just one of these. I always asked for at least a second. So highly recommended on road trips. Maybe get the bigger versions, uh, cause you're probably gonna want it. Okay, we are at our last hotel of this journey, and it was quite an experience. This is the Quality Inn, located in Baker City, Oregon. The front office looked really nice, but the rest of the hotel was a little iffy. It was surprisingly crowded and had kind of a confusing layout, but the problems really began when we arrived to our first room. Uh, we opened the door, and there were people inside. Someone was in the shower, there were personal belongings all over the place, so I just quickly backed out and shut the door. It was, uh, well, that's never happened to me before. So we didn't start out on a great note. On top of that, this is definitely the lowest quality room that we stayed in, which is surprising given how nice the lobby looked. It was a very basic room, no frills here. At the time, I was a little scared of the room, like I thought it seemed a little dirty, uh, but thinking back on it, I was probably just put off by getting sent to the wrong room and the lower than expected quality. Also,
Also, the room was just really dimly lit, which kind of makes it look dingy and dirty. It doesn't look too bad in this footage, though. I really wish there had been side tables on the outside ends of each of the beds. I complained a lot about not having a side table. All in all, it was, you know, it was fine. Getting sent to an occupied hotel room was probably the worst thing that's ever happened to me at a hotel, uh, but I'm assuming that was a one-time occurrence, hopefully. The beds were clean, the room was pretty cheap, and I've stayed in worse hotels. It's the last day of the drive, and we're headed from Baker City, Oregon to Seattle-ish Washington. And this is when things start to get really, really scenic. I distinctly remember this stretch of road from the first time I drove this, because when you initially hit Washington State, things still look dead and brown for a little while. But then all of a sudden you come up over a hill and there's green and mountains, and it's just like, ah, welcome. Welcome home, Ian. They don't call this the Evergreen State for nothing. These trees are no joke. Honestly, it's one of the things I miss the most during my year back in Texas. Today, we're actually taking a different route than I've driven before, and we're going to be going through the Snoqualmie Pass, which takes us right through a national forest. And man, what a beautiful drive. Now it's time for our final quick road trip snack moment. Okay, I actually don't have this one on hand because I ate all of it. Uh, go to Target and check out their trail mix section. I love to shop at Target, uh, so that's where I picked up a lot of snacks before we left, and their trail mix section is no joke. They got a bunch of different kinds to try out from healthy to not. I kind of hung out on the not healthy side. There was a peanut butter chocolate dessert one that was pretty good, but my favorite was called Plop. It was a traditional trail mix uh, with some added peanut butter chips. And like I said, I ate all of it, so I have none to show right now. But if you like trail mix, go to Target. Just go to Target. And that's just about it for this road trip. We arrived home safely and moved in just fine. Sorry for that gap in uploads, I've just been taking some time to get the new place all set up and with the completion of this video I'm officially back in the swing of video production, so be sure to stay tuned for more new things. Thanks for watching.